Welcome back, everybody, to the Boise State Game Pants Esports Arena. This is our coverage of the NECC Collegiate Valorant regular season. Every single one of these matches takes us closer to those playoffs. We are desperately hoping to enter on our way to the championship. That's my name right there at the bottom. I am Tim Voiceless Whitman. I am joined here tonight by my wonderful co-host, Riley. How's it going over there, buddy? It's going good. It's going good. How about you, Voiceless? It is going awesome. Now, we're on the road to our next match later tonight. While we get that started up, I want to ask you what you think about the purported reworks coming to Viper and Yoru that were mentioned in the last patch notes. I think it's, I think we both agree that it's overdue. Um, we, we talked about it a little bit off camera, and, and I think it's just so important that it's something that we, um, we as a community address and hopefully we see get fixed. You know, right now, Yoru is not really viable in almost any situation. The footsteps are so easy to track. The teleport almost doesn't work, and we have enough Flash players in the game already that it doesn't really make him all that more viable. And Viper's only good in certain situations, so I really think it's something that we really need. I'm really excited to see what they come up with, especially for Viper. She's a very interesting character. I really like her... Uh uh, exclusive shorty skin of her of, of mm -hmm. her that you get for reaching level 10 with her yeah. but uh, you know you just you want her to be just a little bit more useful more of the time you feel like you want to bring a little bit more utility to the team so hopefully that comes up soon they did say within the next few patches or so we'll get to see something up in that uh, in that realm so very excited to see what comes of that Viper and Yoru we work I definitely think that Yoru needs a bit of a change with the way that he his teleport works. You know, you, he has that vulnerability time. I mentioned it briefly last week in our epic comeback game. Mm -hmm. But uh, Yoru has that brief vulnerability time when he goes to teleport. And in the game where milliseconds matter, that just doesn't cut it as an escape option when you have something like Jet's Tailwind or Raze's Blaze Packs that activate pretty much instantly. I mean, Blaze Pack has to hit the ground first, but depending on the angle of your camera when you place it, it that can be pretty much instant. So there's a lot of ways to get yourself out of trouble in a hurry, but uh, not for Yoru. He, he takes a little bit. He's vulnerable when he does it. So I just think I think a rework to that and uh, potentially a rework to how uh, his footsteps play on the ground could be a big deal for how he uh, ends up playing out in that duelist matchup. So hopefully we get to see something like that soon. It's going to be uh, very interesting to see what comes out of that. Yeah, I agree. I think... Um I think, you know, it's interesting to see how, how Riot and how Valorant itself just kind of keeps tweaking the meta with how, how, these, um, how these kits get changed, you know. Um, and then as we introduce new agents as well, you know, the, the meta has changed so many times. And that makes it so much more interesting than, you know, another game similar. You know, I mean, obviously with like CSGO, the, o the only other really major game that's similar to it with the, um, with the mouse and keyboard shooter like that we don't get to have those kind of games where they have this, the kits matter so much. And so seeing the adjustments happen all the time is really interesting. It makes the game just all that more interesting to watch. Yeah, the different fantastical elements that each character brings to the table is kind of what makes Valorant so fun to watch. And just a reminder for everybody of our rules tonight, this is the Valorant and ECC League here at Boise State. We have a nine week series of more than 30 teams they're competing in best of three sets, and those maps for are decided ahead of time each week. The home team is going to pick their opening side, either attack or defense, for the first and third games in the set. The away team will pick their opening side for the second game in the set. And we have three brackets of challengers in this NECC Valorant League here. The Broncos are in the champions bracket, the highest one. We also have the challengers and their emergence. And don't you be sleeping on those uh, emergence down there because Johnson and Wales had an absolute banger of a game against Boise State recently. So we have uh, got some serious work to do. We are facing John Wood College this week and it is going to be a very exciting game. We're very excited to see how our Broncos green team shapes up here tonight. Yeah, it's always good to see Boise State, you know, continue to uh, kind of press that charge. You know, they've they've done so well this year. They've got themselves up in the very top echelon of the top echelon, basically. You know, they're in those top couple of spots in the champions division. And seeing them just continue to kind of put their foot on the gas and, and make sure they're winning games is, is fun to watch. You know, we got to see um, we got to see both teams now. They've both played tough games with the other some of the other top teams in the division. And so watching these Broncos just keep winning and, and keep doing their thing is always a blast. Yeah, that comeback win last week was absolutely stellar. Baratel and I were on the edge of our seats. I needed to go lay down after that one, and I was, <laughs> I was worn out. Yeah, I, I, uh, 
I went back and I watched that game and I couldn't believe it, you know, just seeing some of the resiliency and, and the ability to just not get tilted. When things start going your way and the Elims aren't happening the way you need them to early in the match, you know, being able to just kind of regain and get back on the horse and come back and win a tough game that you needed to win, yeah, that was really impressive. Well, we are loading in right now to the big matchup. This is Boise State versus Johnson Wood in the Valorant NECC League here. As we lo load ourselves up, we're going to get set. Let's f move on and talk about Doc's keys to the game for Valorant. Doc's keys to the game is something that we like to do here at Boise State. Doc runs our wonderful Boise State eSports program. And his keys to the game for Valorant are to watch your corners, be ready to trade if your teammates go down, and don't be afraid to use your ultimates because those ultimates do come back faster than you think. They're, uh, they're online more often than not if you're playing well. Doc's keys to the game are brought to you by Count. Count's Identity Trust Global Network delivers real-time fraud prevention, account protection, and enables personalized customer experiences for more than 9,000 leading brands. Count.com. And uh, Sleepy, I want to, or Nappy, sorry, I just want to <laughs> ask you, <laughs> apologies. I just want to ask you real quick, what do you think, as we load up into split here, the Broncos need to do in order to come out early and stay on top in our first map against John Wood tonight? Well, I think that the trademark of this Boise State team is all about being aggressive. This is a team that loves to get out and kind of fly at people and get Elims early in the round. They like to end rounds as quickly as possible. I think this Boise State ne team needs to take advantage of their full kit, Choose make sure they're using aces. everything they can, and using that to be able to just kind of fly at people. Uh, when you look at this, when you look at this side that Boise State's got set up here, they've got some aggression, um, and I'm looking to see both. Looks like Reyna and Rays for Boise State just kind of get out and, and find some elims early and, and end some rounds, you know, right at the very beginning. Bandino with a last minute swap off of Jet onto Reyna, so prioritizing that pop off potential just a little bit more. I mean, Jet is deadly in her own right, as we know, but once you get a Reyna started, she can be hard to slow down. So, uh, pretty, pretty diverse comps actually for uh, competitive Valorant. We've got a Reyna and a Rays that are shared and a jet, excuse me, that are shared on both sides, but controllers and sentinels of different types being played on both sides. John Wood prioritizing the killjoy for that uh, information and the uh, brimstone for remote smoke deployment while the omen is gonna be played for your hat. Another character with a hat, because <laughs> your hat must wear a hat. It's true. If he ever wears a, if he ever plays a character that doesn't wear a hat, uh, the whole world will melt down, I think. Yeah, I uh, I think you're right. I think you're right. I don't, I don't think it's possible. I think it's written probably in in the laws of the universe. I think so. I think it says in tournament rules, you know, uh, you know, no aimbotting, no wall hacks, and your hat has to play somebody who has a hat on. This is rule number three right there. Yeah, I agree. So, and uh, the last, we have the uh, Cypher being played as the Sentinel for Boise State. So they are putting up some of those traps using that camera to get some information in a very similar way as Killjoy, but okay. without the utility of that lockdown to retake sites easily. So Boise State starting out here on the defensive side. They're going to wall off the mail room, and Legit Soldier will see that there are players coming up through mail room. He'll take a couple shots, but it looks like John Wood are going for a, a uh, mid to A split. They're going to go through ropes here and potentially pounce up through the ropes onto the defending players from Boise State there who are watching uh, the upper side of heaven. Bandito will take down one and get out with his life using that dismiss. He gets one on the green. The rest of the players have taken out heaven. Your hat gets one, but Reach answers with one back of his own as a headshot. Dreammaker getting a kill with his grenades. The paint shells excellently getting what he needs onto Reach. And there's only two players remaining for the side of John Wood for playing for Boise State. Yeah, this is exactly what we talked about, getting those Elims early in the round. Boise State, you know, they they sniffed out the mid-push pretty early there with Legit Soldier kind of getting the information he needed to and dropping back quickly. They knew where they were coming from. They kind of had them all funneled, and those were a couple easy Elims to get this round started off well. John Wood has rotated back. They're coming up through mid, looking to potentially push down mail room, uh, but deciding better of it, I think. Uh, they're a little bit indecisive right now, just the two of them playing outside the ropes corridor, trying to decide which way they'd like to go. It is going to be a mail room hit. They're going to walk right up into the uh, line of sight of Bandito, left. who's playing over the top of these boxes, and he'll get taken down by the frenzy from Andy. There is just one player remaining on the uh, B site right now for Boise State. It's Lycan playing in the back. He's going to get walled off, but they'll know he's there once he starts shooting at the wall, so they're going to plant the spike quickly, and Boise State is on the retake in a 3v3 scenario. This should be a nice little pinch for Boise State set up that you see people pushing in from both sides. You've got two pushing in from there, and you got Lycan who is back there and long. All players go down for John Wood as your hat picks up his third of the round with a beautiful headshot there. And, oh, he's going to get the defuse stolen right out from under him. 
That's disappointing. I'd be I'd be a little bit upset if I was your hat, to be honest with you. I'd be uh I'd be a little bit annoyed. Yeah, you see he's annoyed there. He's shaking his shaking head. Shaking his head at Dream Maker there. <laughs> Broncos go up 1-0 as they exit the pistol with the win. Uh, that should lead, you know, as we say so often, it should lead to uh, a round two win more often than not. With the eco lead you get from carrying those guns forward, you are able to uh, pick up the second round pretty easily. You have quite a bit of an advantage in that second round. We'll see if that continues to be the case as Boise State run up here. Or if, uh, you know, John Wood are going to be able to answer back with one of their own. They're not uh, forcing up. They have full pistols on their round, even a shorty. I like to see that. I think the shorties can be a little bit underutilized, so we'll see if they can get anything done with that weapon there. Smoke is going to go down onto the A lobby. Bandito watching the long sight line there, as most of the players from John Wood have not entered yet. They are holding position in the smoke, probably waiting for a little bit more info before they push into A site. I don't think they're going to be able to find the info that they need until they peek fully, and they're probably going to get found. It's kind of a this is a tough this is a tough push. You got three there, and you've got someone in heaven, so. It makes it tough to get in there. Yeah, there's one. Good, good Elin from Bandito down, there. Bandito and Yurhat combined to get two what they need and set the spike on the floor in A lobby. And now the John Wood, uh, John Wood is able to pick it up, um, but they are going to have to play a little bit more carefully as they know that there are players playing there. Shots one are exchanged once again remaining. in the lobby. And with that gun advantage that Boise State has that we're talking about, they're just cleaning up. That's a flawless for Broncos. Yeah, that was that was important. You've really put John Wood in a situation here where now the eco is is not looking as good as you need it to. Boise State should be in a situation where they can go out and uh, get whatever they need. And if they can find another round win here and get you know easy full buys all the way through, now they're they're going to be in a situation where they're at a huge advantage. Yeah, the the coordination from the Broncos here. They've got somebody watching the long angle from the bottom of screens. They've got somebody watching the heaven angle, and then another one watching from around the corner near vents. It's just so coordinated. There's nowhere really you can look and peek without getting without getting pinched there. I would have liked to see John Wood use a little bit more of the utility to gather some intel in that early round. You know, they've got the killjoy. She can place that turret up and see if it can find anything when it goes up, especially gunshots. I would have liked to have seen that from them a little bit just to try and keep themselves uh, out of harm's way and trying not to drive these there. They're going to throw up the wall once again in mailroom. That seems to be legit soldiers go to play so far with that uh, jet, or excuse me, with the sage. Um, and the, oh, the Molotov goes in and starts to crisp the fleet a little bit. He's going to go down. And as uh, John Wood pushes through, they're going to take out Lycan. They're going to go up through ramps. Spike planted. Yeah, oh. they, they oh. got that flank sniffed out pretty well from Boise State. That's tough because they were in a position to get a nice little pinch, and that got sniffed out with the Molotov out there. Ooh, shots exchanged, but nobody goes down until Booty Bandito crosses the line. Going to get what he needs and heal himself up with the overheal, using that devour. So now it's three Broncos in a four-person four retake. They're going to take down the turret, but that'll give John Wood some information about the two players that are playing ahead. In heaven, your hat is going to ooh, peak early, and Legit Soldier gets what he needs. He's right through the smoke, will get Legit Soldier, and there's just two Broncos remaining. The swarm grenades go off. That's going to keep your hat from defusing for the time being, but he's in a bad spot because he has to peak. There's not much time remaining, and Bandito needs to get this win. I don't think he's going to be able to make it to the... Nope, the time is up. He cannot get this defuse off. He's going to lose his gun, and uh, John Wood are going to pick up their first win of the round. Yeah, that was really important. If John Wood would have gone down 3-0, had the eco messed up, they would have been in a tough spot there. I think Boise State, they, they needed to win that round, and they, they got the spike down, which is so, so important against this Boise State team. If you can't get the spike down, you're in a tough spot because Boise State locks down sites so well. Absolutely. I mean, they they went full by on that round there, so you lose that round, you're back on a pistol, then it's a 4-0. The game's starting to slip away from you in this opening half. So very important for John Wood that they are able to pick up the opening part of this half, get some eco on the board and you know not to let this game slip away from them too quickly it looks like they're actually going to come out aggressive you see those smokes being lined up before the round begins there come the smokes but john wood not content to sit back and drive peace these corners anymore they're happy to use that util and it pays off for them they get an opening headshot kill onto your hat as the boom boombot comes in may spot booty bandito depending on his bounce no but the slow field will keep him out of there for the time being they, uh, john wood have full control of the ace site but now uh boise state on the retake gonna have to push into these smokes to see what they can get Bandito goes down early. Yeah, there's there's just more information coming through. I was really unsure about that choice of Killjoy there from John Wood, but it's really paid off for them. It's been it's been oh. so important in these rounds. Got to check those corners, man. Going to get shot in the back from behind, and then the crossfire coming across from the long angle and the turret. Another kill headshot from onto Dream Maker coming down into heaven means we are at a 2-2. And the eco's starting to look real good for John Wood and Boise State potentially heading for an eco here. Yeah, that's a pretty broken buy. You got sheriffs, a Bucky, 
tough on Classic still. Yeah. Now this is potentially going to be a very tough fight eco here for Broncos. We've seen them win with less for sure, but uh, uh, that's not I mean, the position you really want to be in, especially you know early in the game. We know Boise State are a very adrenaline, uh, you know, momentum-driven Valorant team, and uh, you know when they're on the back foot, they can tend to struggle in these rounds. But they're coming out strong. They've got a close angle held with this oh. Bucky. Dreammaker is going to get two before he goes down. They exchange two for two, but then Bandito brother. comes out with that Leer. Gonna get a kill onto the Rez Twister, man. He just he just Rez just to die again. That's just sad. But it actually works out in favor of John Wood because they exchange it back, trade once again, and they're at a man advantage in a three versus two. The plant's gonna go down, the wall goes down. So now they don't have sight lines coming from heaven. Lycan's gonna try and shoot through there, but legit soldier gonna have to rotate around. He's gonna check that corner just a little bit better than last round as somebody <laughs> got peeped, caught out there. Cyber Cage comes in, they're gonna pick up one of these vandals, and the Boise State team has to punch in quick. They may oh. Are they just gonna drop back? I think save? they're gonna save. They don't want any part of this. They got the vandals. I think they want to take the guns and walk away. I'm not sure I'm a big fan of that in a 2v3. I think you've still got a chance with vandals in your hands to make something happen here. I don't I don't know. I feel like with Spike down, you've got you know, you probably have one heaven, you probably have one back sight. It's a lot of corners to check and the trades are coming through. I I don't mind the play just because now you, you guarantee, you know, you guarantee at least two good eco and you can maybe help with the buy as well next round because you save a little bit of you save a little bit of credit for the next round as well. That is true. So we'll see if that strap pays off. Boise State now at a one round disadvantage as we go into our sixth round of the half. They do go for a full buy this round, so Broncos have all having all the guns that they need. Oh four Lycan so far kill list in the round. Hopefully he can pick it up soon. I mean, he is playing a uh, support fragger, so that's not always the uh, the most surprising thing in the world. When you're playing a sentinel, you're generally expected to hold back, but hopefully he's able to answer back with some of his own and get Boise State a few more round wins as we move into the latter half of the uh, the first half here. Like in peeking garage early, will not find any information because all of John Wood is peeking up through mid. Total aggression. I think they drive through that angle and immediately shot down the wall to be placed down by legit soldier there. Ubot's gonna go out, not gonna find anybody though. The angle's not quite right. You can hear the leer coming in, but there's nobody there to see it as that push up mid from John Wood continues. Yeah, Boise State really not letting, they're not you know, buying this bait. The bait is the everyone's mid map. They're just kind of sitting back on the sites and making John Wood push. This is a really smart play from Boise State, you know, not, you know, being aggressive. Like we've seen them be so many times, they're they're doing other things. They're winning in different ways. This is really important for Boise State. I think it is important that they do tend to keep a leash on that aggression because when you hold back a little bit, it forces the attacking team to expend more utility just to clear yeah. angles um, where there aren't necessarily anybody there. There goes the showstopper coming in from Dreammaker. They're going to get two. Spike Moody Bandito picks up another. That's three for the Broncos. Four! The overheal comes in, but Bandito goes down. There's only one Killjoy remaining for John Wood, and he's not long for this world. Boise State Broncos go up 3-3. It's a tie. That was such a smart play. Just sitting there, they knew that there had to be a play coming through. They didn't want to do anything. They heard those ropes come through from John Wood. They knew exactly what was about to happen here. Bandito just kind of hung back, got the information, kind of kind of baited here on the raise, and got a couple of big E-limbs there, a couple of nice couple of nice shots coming through and then the trades just were immaculate for Boise State really. That's exactly what I was talking about. You know, you can see how a lot of John Wood's utility was used to earn them space in mid, which Boise State were happy to give up. They'll give up that space, get a little bit of noise info about which direction the hit is coming from, and then they just retake onto John Wood with impunity. As they're gonna be pushing up actually the A site this time, John Wood going back to that site oh, method for them. They're going to go pull down the long side, but your hat, unbeknownst to them, is playing down on the side itself. He's going to get spotted now and taken out by Green. So Boise State and Amanda's fans, that attacker, Killjoy, uh, lockdown is coming in. So Boise State have to vacate the site or they're going to get uh, caught and not able to do anything for a few seconds. And that works well for John Wood. They have all the space they need. They get a flawless play. They're going to get the back down. Easy peasy. Yeah, that was great use of the ult there to make sure Boise State couldn't push into the site while the spike was going down. Again, like I said, I was I was a little bit uh, I was a little bit interested to see why that Killjoy play was coming through. I would have thought that a cipher would be nice on this map just because there is a lot of flanking possibilities. But boy, it sure has uh, worked out really well for this John Wood team in these first seven rounds. Absolutely, the Killjoy for the sign of John Wood between that lockdown and his turrets, getting plenty of info in the same way that a cipher would, but adding a little bit more uh, lethality to that with the threat of the lockdown holding you in place and the threat of a turret from revealing your location and taking you out with your low health. So this time it's a garage hit and they're coming in fast. W only, no backing, 
no sprinting, or excuse me, no crouch walking, just sprinting. The field, slow field comes down as Bandito trades himself out and will get one of his own. And there comes the Showstopper. Going to get answer with one back. So Boise State the man disadvantage. Legit Soldier going down to the Showstopper. And here comes the plant. The wall is down as well. So Boise State Broncos can really only approach from that side Satchel closest out. to CT spawn. And all the players from John Doe have taken up perfect planted. defensive close time positions. Lycan going to get one and get himself traded out. So now Broncos still at a man disadvantage. Playing behind that wall and playing in both corners with the crosshairs placed exactly where that spike is. So your hat has it all to do as he attempts to retake here into the John Deere team. He's going to push up through these slow fields, but they do not have too much time remaining. Yeah, the double slow really got it slowed down, but those were big shots there from your hat. Can you find One that second? Yeah, Ooh, that, that is. That was so important. Now they know exactly where he is. Yeah, oh. he's going to tap here. That was a great play from Boise State. They. Your hat had to get, had to find both of those e limbs. That was so critical, and him doing that really, really, really got that retake going. And he gives up the defuse to his buddy Dreammaker. What a bro! I like that. He already has his ult. He doesn't need it. Might as well get Dreammaker going. You want to get that showstopper back as soon as you can, because it's so, so nice to be able to clear out of sight. Just get that rocket launcher and come in and just kind of take care of somebody with not having to worry about much at all. So I'm struggling, honestly, Nappy, to identify a little bit more of a pattern here. Generally, you know, in Valorant, you can kind of see, after a few rounds like this, the weaknesses and strengths of some of these teams start to bring to bear, and you can kind of develop a plan, you know, especially as a, as a uh, caster who gets to see everything, like what you think each team needs to do a little bit differently to come out on top, but it just feels so round to round with both of these teams. I, you know, some rounds the retake goes great for the Broncos. Some rounds they just can't seem to make it happen. Sometimes the slow play seems to suit, uh, you know, John Wood, and sometimes the full aggression seems to be what they need. And I'm really struggling to figure out what's Spike making planted. the difference one round to the next here because both teams are so back and forth in their schedule. I think both teams are just kind of feeling each other out. You know, we've seen uh, we've seen some adjustment as Your you see Boise State. Now there over. there comes the res. On to Dreammaker. I think Boise State's just trying to figure out John Wood. They're trying to get an idea. They're, I think they're in a similar situation to you. They don't really know exactly what's going on. We've seen wall placements vary. Um, two big kills. That, uh, come there. Remaining. Three now. I think. I think they're just trying to figure out exactly what John Wood's all about because they don't even Prepare know themselves. For yet. Nice finish there from Bandito as well. I mean that. That was a great play from Boise State. They found three Elims right in a row, real in quick succession, and that just completely flipped around in their favor. That was beautiful. The blind that comes through kind of pulls everybody's attention towards screen, and that's not actually where the hit comes from. Everybody's kind of looking towards your hat when you know, perfectly replay right here. You can see that blind came out right before this, but then the raise comes up, uses the blast packs to get into position. It gets an easy kill between him and Bandito, picking up both players playing in the crosshair or playing in the crossfire on that corner there. And after that, it's an easy cleanup. You know, great attempt. I love the usage of the uh, orbital strike by the brimstone from the side of John Wood to try and delay that spike plant. But Boise State are just too quick on the retake. There's not enough delay time possible using that orbital strike, and they end up getting the back. Anyway. You hear that Lear coming out early. The aggression. There they are. John Wood pushing up A or pushing up mid, very hard, sending in the boom bot and the Lear as the wall comes down. He's in shot down immediately. Another that's Lear, that's, that's, uh, that's Reyna for John Wood out of Lear now, but Legit Soldier is going to get taken down by Twister Man as they push that's up the railroad. Yeah, you saw the difference in the wall there. Boise State starting to get a little bit more aggressive. The last couple of rounds, Legit Soldier has placed that wall mid. Instead of placing it in mailroom like he was, Boise State's trying to get pushed up a little bit more. Well, Big shots from Lycan there, and there's the Neural Theft coming in as well. Get that info, pop that ult. So important for Boise State to find out where they are and take a 6-4 lead. Yeah, they will know that everybody's in mailroom. Oh, that's a bait if I've ever seen one. That is oh. definitely a dead Reyna. It ends up not really going the way of John Wood as Lycan picks up a kill, Spike gets planted. the Reina dead once again, but then will be traded out. So Boise State in its first three, and they didn't expect Bandito to be playing there. On the flank, gonna get one onto Twister Man. They'll know that there's somebody else playing in heaven based on that turret getting shot down, but there's only two players remaining here for John Wood and Boise State. They have a location, they have all the information they need. Rudy Bandito, oh! Oh, you have to win that. Almost didn't get that win there. Your hat's gonna get taken down by Reach, so it's a one versus one, but there is a Lear remaining for Rudy Bandito if he decides to send that out. He has a much better play on this Diffuse. He can pump fake, and he does get the information he needs. He knows exactly where they're playing. Might take this to half. Oh, oh! The disrespect starts the pump fake, takes him down with the headshot, and will finish it out anyway. Boise State, 6-4 as we're nearing the end of this half.
Those were some crazy shots coming through. I mean, he got the double pump fake and pulled right out and just locked onto a head. Those were ridiculous shots. That was beautiful crosshair placement. And, you know, just kind of explaining, that, that's a perfect example for anybody who's a little unfamiliar with Valorant, how important crosshair placement is right there. Because the difference between a win and a loss in that scenario is milliseconds. So the fact that he has his crosshair placed exactly where he needs it means that, you know, it's just a click of the, click of the button, gets the headshot, before the enemy even has time to shoot him down coming around that corner. Well, I think what was so important is he held the defuse through that second peak from the Reina there, so or from the Rays, excuse me. So the Rays thought that he was gonna still be on it, still be hopping, but instead he he that's held it through. I like that camera placement. Yeah, that's Sorry. nasty. No, you're good. I think I just think that the that the hold there was so important. It is the Boombot's gonna go out and we'll only get information that there is somebody there with a vandal, not how many players may be playing there. The plant is going to go down. Bandito will take somebody out, but Dreammaker will be traded out in return. There goes the Paranoia. Not going to find anybody, I don't think. There is a player on the left of your half, on the other side of that Cypher cage. They may not know he's there as they push in. Oh, the sprint to the smoke will get what he needs. Your hat comes around, picks up another headshot. He gets his third of the round, and the Broncos are going to get the DPU. They're going to go up 7 4. Your hat has been putting in work. Those shots through the Cypher cage were so clutch. Boise State sharing this ult, or sharing the, uh, the DPs as well to try and get to the ult. Um, they're just trying to get everything pumped as well as they can, so they're ready to just kind of put this to bed. In the half. Although it looks like, I don't know how close they are in their ults. It looks like Reyna has got hers. Um, no, never mind. I don't think she does. Or does she? I can't tell. I this can't is tell. a replay from the round previously. Uh, it looks like, um, if you can see on the live view in the corner there, oh, there we've it got is, yeah. uh, your hat and uh, the uh, the rays for Boise State are both have their ults online. There we go. My eyes are bad. That's all right. <laughs> so we're heading into the final round of the half here. Be interesting to see if the tables turn at all as we head into Boise State being the attackers. This can be, you know, somewhat of a one-sided map in certain situations. So, if the attackers are unable to uh, find what they need as Boise State in the second half, this, could, this game could turn around real quick. So, don't catch your chickens before they hatch just yet. Cypher Cage going up. Going to prevent anybody with the smoke field. Going to prevent anybody from pushing too far into into B from the garage, but Booty Bandito going to get one kill. Ooh, gets a headshot on another one through the box. Not going to quite get the kill, but they'll know there's somebody there. He uses the dismiss to get himself out safely, and now this push is stalled out. John Wood cannot comfortably push through any further. Lycan will get one of his own, and now they're at a huge disadvantage. I think you need to turn around and you need to leave if you're John Wood here. This push has not worked for you. No, but two kills come one through there. there. Lycan with a big double, though, I think, I mean, it keeps them in the round, but... Yeah, I think you're right. It didn't work out. Bandito did so well to get the info on the second on the second Elim there that pretty much made it impossible for them run. to get a push. <laughs> you need to run, Sage. <laughs> the showstopper is coming for you. <laughs> there it is. Oh, I feel some Liam Neeson vibes right there. I will find you, <laughs> and I will showstopper Switching you. Switching <laughs> I think you're right. I like that. That's that is a horrifying situation to be in when you know it's the last round. You know the ults are out, and you're like, well, I I can't do anything, guys, at this point. Yeah, you're just done. Just sit down. Boise State and John Wood swapping sides. They are on the attack now. It looks like we have some saying we need. To, we may need to pause in chat as we wait, but uh, your hat is standing stationary in spawn, so he may have disconnected maybe AFK for just a little bit. We'll see if he manages to come back in time. But for the moment, we are swapping sides, and that does give us a chance to talk about how Boise State's aggression does give them an opportunity to either fall behind or get themselves even further ahead in the second half. Sometimes defense doesn't play quite the same as attack. So when you're on the attack, maybe the strats you were using in defense don't necessarily work the same as they did before. So Boise State may need to either, you know, come out full aggro. That might put John Wood on the back foot so they can, you know, put this game away. Or they might need to find that they need to play a little bit slower and more defensively because John Wood are ready for that you know, unique brand of chaos that the Broncos tend to bring to the table here. I think Boise State's going to try in these first couple of rounds to see what they can get away with aggression-wise. But, you know, it's, it's a common theme in Valorant. The pistol rounds are so important. And this pistol round is really going to define, I think, the – I mean, if, if Boise State takes this pistol round and goes up 9-4, I think John Wood's going to find themselves in a situation where – it's going to be tough to come back. Boise State's going to keep building confidence. And Boise yeah. State, when they're confident, just flies at people. And that's so tough to beat. So this pistol round is really going to set the tone for the second half. Yeah, especially when you get into some of those points to get closer to match point. Because, you know, when you're at match point, you, sometimes you just have a bad round. Sometimes you get caught by surprise. A flank catches you the wrong way, and you just can't find what you need. But when you're on match point, you can't afford Sorry. that. So it doesn't matter how many rounds you are behind. You know, sometimes when you're at match point, you can't afford to have a bad round. And sometimes that's all it takes to throw a game. 
Yeah, I think uh, Boise State, they're trying to see if they can get away with some aggression. They didn't really see anything mid-map that was going to work out. They got the info there with the bot coming through the wall, but it didn't quite give them what they wanted, and John Wood didn't quite peek it like they wanted. That's uh, That slowed things down for sure. Yeah, they do know that the Sage and the Razor are both playing there because they saw the boom bot and they see the wall. So based on that information, I really like this intelligent you know, controlled play from the Broncos. They're deciding to rotate. Dreammaker is still exchanging shots in mid. He has not given them any indication that there is still not a mid hit coming. And so by the time the Broncos reach B main, or excuse me, A main, there's nobody there to defend except for one singular player in heaven. So Broncos essentially get the site control for free and force John Wood to retake into them. Just using, you know, a little bit of misdirection using uh, you know, that uh, that raise exchanging shots in mid there, but ooh, using the frenzy and the paint shells, Reach gets two on the retake for John Wood. Not, not often that you see a 5v5 plant come through. There's usually an opening find oh, there. Oh, Lycan, Lycan uh, stopped the 360 coming through. That frenzy was big, but yeah, there you go. Boise State got it down to a 2v1, even though John Wood started off really strong that round. They did start off strong, but they entered, you know, just too quickly, I think the Broncos were just too ready for it, especially because Lycan was playing in that corner. I don't think they expected him to be there. He got two kills without much threat to himself, and once that happens, you know, you're in a 3v3, and, you know, Bandito's gonna clutch at some point, so he gets a couple kills with that Reyna, gets, you know, himself healed up with that overheal and the Devour. That puts the Broncos up 9-4. Just like you were talking about, that pistol goes the way of the Broncos. They're on a bit of a bonus now, because, you know, John Wood can't really afford to buy anything after a pistol loss, so They've got SMGs due the Broncos on the side of the attack, so they're probably, you know, unless something crazy happens, they're more than likely going to pick up this second this second round here in the second half, so that puts them up 10 for Before you know it, you're starting to run out of chances to, you know, make something happen before the game is over if you're John Wood. Yeah, I want to see Boise State start to really use those kits and get aggressive here. I'm hoping that we're going to see some pushes here because I think Boise State has the opportunity to really kind of fly at people, and I'm going to be interested to see if they try and pick up a couple early elims here in these rounds. But Ooh, it's kind denies of denies the alarm start. bot. Not going to get any utility from that. They'll know someone's there, but no reveal and no vulnerability placed onto any characters. They also sent the paint shells in so they can clear that corner on their left. They know that nobody's there. Bandito's going to check anyway because this is Valorant and you should always check your corners. But there's actually only two people playing uh, a or B site here for John Wood. There's one underneath and one playing Heaven. The wall's going to go up to seal off the player from Heaven, and they are going to take full control of the site. Paint shells come in, but not going to catch anybody. Going to spray some shots down through CT. If Lycan chooses to spray, oh, he will notice there's somebody behind that spike, oh. but he's going to get caught out by a flank coming in. Green's going to take him out, but Bandito answers back. It's a four versus four. The Broncos have placed the spike down and now dare John Wood to push into them, especially with a couple players at very low health. Boise State's done really well to get these spikes down, not waiting at all. As soon as they see an opening, they're getting that spike down, and that's so important. Anytime you make a team try and go on a retake, it's almost impossible, and those were great tracing. And what a... The right click comes the jumping through. jumping classic. Oh, my word. What a shot from Legit Soldier. The bunny hop jumping classic gets the kill in CT spawn, and the rest of the Broncos will clean up the flanker playing on the other side of that wall. That's up the Broncos. Like I said, 10-4, and you're starting to run out of opportunities to make something happen here. So this is our third round. The Broncos, as we like to say, they did buy last round with SMGs. They don't have enough to comfortably buy again for this third round, whereas because they have two losses in a row, you can see the guns for John Wood are very good. They have every full buy that they could possibly want. So they do have gun advantage going into this third round, which is generally the case when somebody takes the first two pistol rounds uh, in a player in an early Cage game. So it may be possible that John Wood d makes their comeback here, but it's kind of do or die for them because if they lose this one, they're right back on an eco. And then it's match point. You know, you lose you lose this one, then you lose an eco, and we're on match point. So John Wood needs to make so ha something happen now before it's too late. Boise Bron State getting that aggressive up into heaven, too. I like that play a lot. They also are very split. They've got a player pushing up towards garage, trying to draw a little bit of attention. He will keep one player from John Wood honest. There's somebody still playing heaven because potentially they sent somebody playing through market there. But now with the spike down, they'll know that the play is for A. The, the wall comes up for legit soldier, and your hat gets one onto green. Booty Bandito gets another in heaven. So it's a 3v5 on the retake here for John Wood. Yeah, there's the lair coming out too in heaven. If anyone was pushed up, but no one was even there yet. Good shots though coming through. Bandito goes down in heaven, and that might be the opening that John Wood needs. They'll know there's somebody playing in the ropes based on the location of those paint shells, but they're running out of time, our John Wood, to make something happen here. They're up in heaven, but they're more concerned about who's playing ropes than they are the spike, and that's 
you know, that's never the position you want to be in. You don't want to have to be watching your back while you're trying to be in a gunfight. And there we illustrate exactly why Twister Man gets himself backstabbed by Dream Maker. And I think Reach on the raise is just going to save this round because he knows that the Econ is not looking good for them and the game is starting to slip Ooh. through their fingers. Ooh, but he will make this round costly for the Broncos. Gets up to... Oh, oh, that's brutal, though. He almost had the save, and he just threw it away. He almost had the save and two kills. He almost could have made the eco very touch and go there for the Broncos, but, but in dying in the final seconds of the round, that puts John Wood on a full save again. They might force up because they don't have a lot of other options. See, they are going to go for a couple Spectres, but that puts them in rough position. I can kind of understand their predicament, though, because you either save this round and get a great buy next round, but you're on match point, or you go for a broken buy this round, but, uh, you know, you have that opportunity to keep the game a little bit more in check. Ooh, they'll see a cape just a little bit there. Sees a foot. They'll know there's somebody playing heaven as the Boombot also goes in. Gonna clear out that right side. And they're gonna send the paint shells in. They're gonna know if they throw that wall up, they should be roughly safe enough in order to push on the site. But the slow fields will make that interesting for them. Yeah, every Elim that comes through here is pretty much, you know, a dagger in the back of John Wood right now. They've got to find a way to at least get close to a flawless here, you know, four up. Trying to save the eco as much as they can because in every single time they lose a person, like right there, Bandito finding that opening, that's, uh, that, that hurts because that's just eco going away. It was so beautiful of the Broncos to play that flank. I wasn't sure if we'd get a chance to talk about it before the kills came through, but I love the play of the Broncos to send two up through mid. They'll get a kill, but what they also do is form a distraction. They don't have everybody watching down through mid right now, or up from heaven right now, and that gives the Broncos the opportunity to plant that spike. They'll use Dream Maker as bait. Ouch, that hurts. Get him taken down, but Twister Man is the only one remaining. He's got that orbital strike, but in a retake scenario, It'll be interesting to see if he can get any kills here for Boise State. He won't. He hoped there was somebody playing back in that corner, and there wasn't. Both Broncos live. They know where he is. They know he's coming from heaven. The clock's ticking down, and Twister Man in a 2v1 Stim with a Spectre in his hand. All to do with his team there. He gets shots. one. He takes Lycan down, and he gets one, and now it's a reset. There is just a 1v1 remaining, and the info is gone. He's going to pump fake the spike. He doesn't know. He doesn't realize the legit soldier's on his flank and has come around. He gets stabbed in the back. Boise State on match point as we're looking to match close point. out split here. John Wood have got a long way to go if they want to bring this one back. Yeah, they they are going to try. They have to try and get another broken by. And it's there's not much you can do here because you, you lost a lot of eco. Boise State, I mean, that really feels like just such a, I mean, going on to match point is always a huge round. But really, I mean, just absolutely throwing the daggers to make sure that there's no way to bring a full eco back for John Wood. This is tough. Yeah. They're going to rush a site, are the Broncos. They're pat that, that patented aggression. No hesitation. They're not even going to wait to try and exchange shots with anybody who may be playing screens. They dash in, use the showstopper to terrify anybody away from the site. They probably won't get any kills with this, but they don't need it. This is a space gaining ultimate only, and it's done what it's designed to do. Broncos have the entire site to themselves and force John Wood to push into them now. And you see, it looks like Bandito had popped his ult as well, but he does get found. There's two nice finds for John Wood, and it sounds like the Showstopper coming out on their side as well. They are not expecting Dream Maker to be playing in that corner where Lycan was playing previously, so once again, that, that flank catching them off guard, but it is still a 4v2 with John Wood pushing in. They may get what they need here to keep this game alive. Oh, not if that keeps going the way, though. All wow. of a sudden, it, I mean, that, that round I spoke flipped on its head so fast. Ooh, the fake TP to get him to try and aim somewhere else. He's still, Green is still looking at your hat, but it doesn't matter. The swing comes through, the headshot comes through, and Boise State takes the first map against John Wood Community College here. Split goes their way, the Broncos up, 1-0. Ooh, that was spicy. There were some pretty sweet plays there coming through. Boise State, you know, we've seen them be aggressive. Now we see them be, like, the smart plays, that was just, fantastic all around. There were so many instances in which I love the Broncos, you know, cerebral play in order to send somebody a, a fake, a, a misdirect to send somebody the wrong way, a distraction to send some people to try and take some attention from mid. Beautifully played there from the Broncos. That was that was chef's kiss. Mwah. <laughs> Just a reminder, everybody out there, score pro, e, uh, score pro advice at esportstower.com. Improve your Valorant game sense, improve your team play, improve your performance under pressure. You'll get matched with great players and professional coaches to help you rank up. Check out esportstower.com, everybody. Yeah, those, you, you said, you said some, what, 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 what was the word you described those plays? 
how did you how did you say that? Chef's kiss. I think before that was you say the spicy. I don't even remember. I don't know the word that came to my mind. Galaxy brain. Those were oh, sweet. It cerebral. Was, You're talking about cerebral. There play. we go. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, it was almost like it was almost like they had the um, some of like those Astra effects when it gets like all galaxy going on in their mm -hmm. head. It was like wow, you know the the double taps on the on the defuses, the fake TPs, stuff that I could never even think of doing to be honest with you. Well, that was a spicy map, but that's going to do it for map one, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to take a short break and come back at you with map number two. That's going to be bind in this best of three series. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Legendary parts for legendary wins. Welcome back, everybody, to the Boise State Game Pants Esports Arena. This is our coverage of the NECC Collegiate Valorant regular season. We have just closed out map one against John Wood Community College, and we are headed into map two, which is going to be played on Bind. That's your sandy one. That's the one that takes place in Cypher's hometown, Morocco. <laughs> We're going to have a blast as we check that one out. But before we do, this is my co-host, my partner in crime, <laughs> Nappy. It is, it is funny because uh, I do run Cypher. So I guess he, he is a criminal. So that, that does work out pretty well. And this is, this is my map then, I guess, huh? This, yep. would, this would work out pretty well. Boy, we saw some pretty good stuff in that first map, some, just some gigabrain stuff. And I'm interested to see how Boise State continues that, that trend, see if they can continue to morph chaos with with just intelligent plays. I'm really proud of the team and interested to see their growth as they continue with this because we've seen that their gunplay is cracked. We've seen that a million times. But what we were always a little worried about is what tends to happen when somebody can match them play for play on that gunplay. You know, th blow for blow, they start to lose players. That's when they started to look weak. But mm -hmm. bringing that level of, you know, thinking, thinking their way through using misdirects and a little bit of brains along with their gunplay is just taking them to a whole new level, and I'm so excited to see where the Broncos go from here as we uh, 
head closer to those playoffs, a championship, and who knows where we're going to go, man. Yeah, I, I think I think that they started off the season so cracked, they lost the game, and it's forced them to really think about how they play and, and try and find new ways to win games. I think that's just going to only help them. Reminder for everybody, if you're just joining us about our rules here in the Valorant and ECC League, we've got a nine-week series which we are quite a ways into by this point. We have 30 plus teams. They are all competing on best of three sets of maps. Uh, those maps are chosen ahead of time each week. There's no loser pick stuff here. Uh, they're all decided ahead of time, but your home team is going to pick their opening side, attacker or defender for the first and third maps. The away team is going to pick their opening side for the second map. So that keeps it fair, keeps everybody a little bit more in balance. There's sometimes the, you know, the, the pace that you set in the opening half can dictate how things go in the second half. So that can be very big deal about, you know, which side you end up playing first. So those picks are not insignificant. The Broncos are highly ranked in the Valorant and ECC League. We've got three tiers of players here. This is the champions, the challengers, and the emergence. You can see both of our Boise State squads are up in the champions bracket, along with our opponents tonight, John Wood College. So they are nothing to sneeze at. Uh, definitely going to be interesting to see if they can bring it back as we head into bind here for the second map. But speaking of which, I want to ask you, Sleepy, S Nappy. I've my my name came from Sleepy, so I, under I understand how you could get there. I've done that twice now. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're good. Um, I, have, uh, I have a question to ask you. What do you think needs to change for John Wood in order to keep the Broncos on a tight leash in bind here? How do they need to change in order to make this more competitive? I think what we saw a little bit out of John Wood was they expected kind of what we expected, this really aggressive play style from Boise State. And Boise State hasn't really done that. And I think it's kind of frustrated John Wood into, you know, maybe challenging some stuff that wasn't necessarily the right play. I think John Wood needs to be okay with just sitting back and saying, okay, you're not going to push us. Well, we're not going to push you, especially on the defensive side. When Boise State was on offense, John Wood seemed to just get more and more frustrated. I think they just need to say, we're going to let you push us, and we'll let you figure it out, but we just got to hold our sights instead of just letting Boise State get 5v5 plants every time. Hopefully they can find something like that because they are going to need to change some things up, or this one is going to be just as much of a slaughter as the first one was. That was a, that was a rough match to watch. Yeah. This is your Boise State green team who we're going to be watching tonight. They are made up of Bandito, Ethan Cobb, Dreammaker, Luke Edwards, Legit Soldier, Zach Wilcox, Lycan, Blake Ramsey, and your hat, Seth Banta, who, as we previously discussed, always must wear a hat. See, I'm, I'm a little bit annoyed with these team pictures that Bandito's the one wearing the hat instead of your hat. I think, I think that needs to change. It does need to change. That just feels <laughs> wrong. <laughs> well, everybody, we are loading up right now. This is the Boise State versus John Wood Community College Valorant match. And we're going to get loaded in. Everybody's going to get picked there. Agents, we're going to see how these rosters and compositions end up going out. But let's finish up our thoughts and discussions, make some predictions on how this map is going to go before we do. Looking at these team comps, Nappy, what do you think is the big play here for John Wood? What are they hoping to achieve with this? Uh, you know, they've got two duelists, uh, two uh, initiator. Sorry, no, one initiator, one controller, and one sentinel. What do you think their plan, their game plan is here on Bind? I think it's going to end up being kind of, there. you know, we're seeing some flashes come out. I think they're just going to try and get information. I think they're going to try and play this a little bit slower. I hope they're going to try and play this a little bit slower, but I am a little bit curious to see how this Sova, you know, kind of works into their to their composition. And Boise State maybe taking a page out of their book, you know, bringing in the Killjoy. Um, it is interesting to see how these teams just kind of switch. I really don't know what they're going to do because I didn't expect that first couple of rounds to go the way it did on the first map either. Honestly, I really like the Killjoy pick here for the Broncos because it does a lot of what the Cypher does. Um, but, you know, the Killjoy turret is autonomous. Cypher needs to look down his camera. He puts himself at risk because he's standing still totally vulnerable when he's watching his camera. Whereas the Killjoy turret can watch those same angles without any involvement whatsoever from Killjoy herself. So I, I think that the team names actually might be flipped because it seems like Boise State is the one with a phoenix. Oh! The Jit Soldier has a phoenix. Look at that. You're correct. Wow. Whoa. Good shots. Very good shots. They're going to answer back to one of their own. It's a 4v4. Boise State on the attacking side. They're going to send in that silver drone. Going to know there's somebody playing up on the box there. Great drone. And then with 
Wow. The wall bangs. The wall bang, but Lycan finishes him off with the headshot as the Voice of State Broncos have an advantage advantage, two versus four, and the spike goes down. Yeah, they did a good job of uh, just winning the gunfights they needed to win, you know, being on the same page. The comms were immaculate there, and I think that shows with the wall bang into the headshot that traded, you know, that was just, um, that was impeccable. That was a great first pistol round from Boise State. I love that pistol skin that Dream Maker. I hope he pulls it out again. It's so pretty. Yeah, it really Winter is. Wonderland. Oh, if I was going to spend money on this game, that's what I would buy. Yeah, I think it's between that and the um, and the dragon skin. I think uh, those are probably the two ones that I'd buy. Although I basically got that because Call of Duty ripped off Valorant with their dragon skin on on one of their guns. So I don't even know. Do I? I don't even know if I need to spend money on it now. I can see it in other games. No shade here. <laughs> no shade here. They're gonna send that owl drone down through B or A short again to see if they can find anything. There are no players playing out in the open though. There's one playing U-Haul. He's not going to get spotted just yet. And the player, oh, he will get caught, but not by the Sova drone. Lycan going to pick up a headshot kill with the Spectre onto Andy, who's playing the Sage in showers. So now the smoke's come down. Voice Sheet has full sight control, and they're probably going to fight that spike very soon. Yeah. I One one thing that I love Andy seeing, remaining. oh, good shots from Bandito there. One thing that I love seeing the Voice State does so well, they use their flashes just so effectively. Uh, it's really impressive um, how they're able to enter the site so well. And Jit Soldier running that Phoenix right now is so good at that. Just clearing out, knowing, getting great info, and just making sure no one can find his teammates when they need it done. It's really impressive to me. Boise State kind of falling back on their old trope of full aggro. Why use your brain when you can shoot things? But <laughs> hey, it's working for them. They've come out 2-0 so far. This is the round where things could be different, though. As we like to say so often, the third round is the round when the losing team is going to get that full buy they've been looking for. And the winning team is usually stuck with the SMGs they generally buy in the second round for sub. So if John Wood is going to win a round, it's going to be this one. Let's see if they can take anything away from the Broncos. As they've switched up their sight push, they're doing a split hookah long push on B. And the smokes will come down and give them a little bit of info about that. All the players from John Wood seem to be moving over to B to take advantage of that information, except for uh, the Sage, who does appear to be moving down A. Yeah, and you see Bandito already getting a little bit aggressive, popping the smoke, then a tailwind, trying to get on a little bit of a flank here. Now he's got that shift walk working. He's going to be in a situation where he's going to be behind some players, but it's almost going to be too little too late. We'll see how many he can find. That's one. Can he get a second? They know where he is now. He may have to peek this by himself, and there's a turret there that is going to make things difficult for him. He does have a teammate playing Kuka, but they're pinned down, not able to do much. Ooh. Ooh. Beautiful swing. Gets another kill. Like in Hookah, going to keep the, the uh, Sage standing. out of his way using that cypher cage and now it's a one versus two lichen gonna get hit with the leer not gonna be able to see too far he is in a 1v1 position but he's gonna get taken down by green and that's john wood picking up their first round win it's one two and the broncos are on a full reset they'll have plenty of money to buy this round and john will get to take the guns they save so this is our first full gun round for both teams going into the fourth round here. when he when when bandito got that first kill and nobody pushed him. I thought he was going to find two. He did find that second Elim, and I, I wasn't sure if he was going to be able to find a third because no one really swung around. I think he could have peeked out, and he could have got a third in quick succession. I really thought that that flank was going to completely alter the way that round was going. Yeah, it was a little bit unfortunate that he didn't end up getting to take the flank on his terms. You know, he gets one kill in the hallway, and then he kind of has to peek a different angle a couple seconds later, whereas when you're in that flank, what you really want to do is get a flanking peek and line up two guys and get them both with one peak, which is what I think he was hoping for when he went through elbow there. Yeah, he did make a nice swing to get that Vandal, though, and get the shots off. And I think take out that Killjoy utility. Pushing up through Hookah, Bandito will get himself taken down, and the smokes have come down, so Legit Soldier is a little averse to pushing through this smoke line. He does have both of his curveballs, but they're a little bit uncertain about pushing through this B site again. Kind of surprised they didn't respond with the smoke. I mean, you see the smoke there on the uh, on the elbow. There it was good play from Boise State. You know, using those using those Spike utilities. Down, good beat. shots coming through there as well. It's it's going to be all about what can legit soldier do here to break this. He's got to be the one to do it. And I think it's got to be the curveballs. I think it. it does have to be those curveballs. They're watching this angle like hawks. But you know, with those flashes, with that flame Last wall, you might be able standing. to find a little bit of what you're looking for, especially as Dreammaker's gone down in a 1v3. Jit Soldier's got it all to do, but he does have one 1v1 set up for him. He gets a second. It's down to a 1v1, and he can heal. Left. Hot Hands goes down. He's going to get himself back up to 100 health. He's even got that ult if he needs it. Curveball goes out. 
Oh, the he gets centering. the headshot kill. It's beautiful, the clutch from Legit Soldier. If there's one person on this team, you know, in, in the four weeks that I've been involved with casting Valorant, if there's one person on this team that I believe can clutch a 1v3, 1v4, even find a huge ace, it's Legit Soldier. I've seen him make some ridiculous plays. The hot hands come through, and then a sweet curveball right into the headshot. Fantastic plays from Legit Soldier. I, I have no complaints. I like to analyze <laughs> these. I like to analyze these plays after they happen and talk about what could have been done differently. I just there was nothing. Legit Soldier played that perfectly. I couldn't have done it any better. Yeah, I couldn't have done it. I just <laughs> period. <laughs> he may be tempted to use that run it back. There it goes. He's gonna clear out this A site. Whoa! But the wall goes oh. up, trying to keep him out. But it won't matter. He shoots right through it because that wall is a little bit weaker than it used to be. Oh, the knives go wide. Almost gets the kill there onto the jet from John Wood. Won't quite get it, and the running back will expire. But Boise State have all the sight control they could need. The spike's going to go down. They're going to take a post-plant position, and the wall bang is going to come through. They even catch that jet out. Nope, not quite going to go down, but the Cypher Cage is going to reveal that there is somebody playing there. She goes down to the wall bank from Dreammaker. Oh, and he walked, Dreammaker walked right into Jet's classic reach there, unfortunately. Just didn't check the right corner. Reach with another big one out there. I think he picked up, um, I think he picked up Dream's uh, Phantom there. He did. He has a Phantom he picked up from a body, so he is in a 1v3, but he does have a gun upgrade. Going to try and wall bang. Not going to quite get it. Oh, bad timing for a reload. He's in trouble now. He's at only 71 health, and his position is revealed. Time is expiring. The blind comes through. Beautiful paranoia. He has to tailwind out, and now he's got to re-peak. He doesn't have time to get to the spike. He's going to take Locked one, inside. get himself out of there, and try and get exits. The round will go the way of the Broncos. It's going to be, is someone going to peek here with the Cypher? Is he going to find it? Oh, he gets oh, found. He gets found. He doesn't get to keep that gun. I, he, if he would have just held that and just waited to see if Boise State was on the flank, like he probably should have done, he was going to at least get the cypher. He was liking was going down. I don't know about the third, but he got too aggressive with it and peaked it. Yeah, I don't know what else you can really do in that situation. He sends out the smoke, which isn't a bad play. You know, the cloud burst is going to kill him safe as he tries to run away from the shock blast. But once you do that, people kind of know where you are. They can hear the cloud burst go down. They can see it if they peek that angle. So he was not in the best of positions. He was tough. Just kind of lose-lose scenario there for Reach. Yeah, I mean, I guess finding one Elim there as an exit was not a bad thing, but the not not what you want. They switch back to the B site hit. Dreammaker sending in that owl drone as once again the Brimstone playing the side of John Wood is going to smoke off that octagon. That leaves most of Boise State to push through the smoke or be forced to rotate around through Hookah, where honestly, the Broncos have not had a lot of success. I feel like most times they do this B hit. Most of the hookah players end up going down. Ooh, yeah, you should cancel out of that, your hat. <laughs> he gets some information about where some of the John Wood players are playing, and then he's going to get himself out of there. The Hunter Fury comes in, tags up one. Can he get the kill? No, going to go quite. wide to the right. As the Broncos may go for the TP teleport play here. A couple of them go through the TP. Lycan, check those corners. Uh. Oh, checks it, but doesn't check it thoroughly enough as the Bucky takes down Lycan. They're going to know there's somebody playing market. As the shots are exchanged, as the players attempting to retake from John Wood, one of them will get taken out. The Broncos in a man disadvantage. Ooh, but the spike going to be denied by the orbital strike. Yeah, that's one of the times where you can deny that spike plant. You know, orbital strike is usually so effective when you've got it down and you're looking to stop left. a defuse. But sometimes you get those crazy timings where if you know they're going to be planning on default, it's just really easy to call it in when you think they're going to get the plant off and just kind of deny it and make everything reset. Like the you see, mind games wrap. continue. Boise State running just out of earshot of the players from John Woods. So now the spike's going to go down at B, and they get a free plant down there. Left. Yeah, that was... Uh, it's a really good play. You know, they, they decided to not, you know, freak out and try and retake over there on A, but instead just kind of wrap it. Smart play. And they plant in the back, not going for a default plant. They're going to play from the defender's spawn and set up the bomb so that it's within line of sight of that back doorway. So that is kind of involves John Wood to retake even more dangerously than you generally are trying to take on this site. He'll get a little bit of info and exchange some shots with the player coming out of Hookah, and then Rudy Bandito is going to back up, keep himself safe. They're going to play for time here. That's a pump fake, but the Broncos may not necessarily know that the wall comes in, but it will not remain up for long. Time is expiring, and the final player for John Wood goes down. Legit Soldier with three in the round, and the Broncos go up 5-1. Starting to run away with it. He, Legit Soldier is so good when he gets the opportunity to run a duelist. He is he is so good at just kind of popping off. He's a, he, he's a good sage when they need him to, but when he gets the chance to run this Phoenix, 
he is nasty. He can make some crazy plays. Yeah, and I just love that he held the angle there and kind of waited for the Killjoy to push into him. There is Pika's advantage in this game. We know that all the time, but when you're playing in a 2v1, it's so important that you line up with your teammate. The last thing you want to do is give your opponent a couple 1v1s by giving them, you know, the, the ability to line up with just one player at a time. We've seen how that can work for and against the Broncos in the future. And so I just love the, the play from Legit Soldier to hold the angle there and make sure that the enemy doesn't get a 1v1 as they push into the Yeah, and he's got some info here as well. It looks like he's not going to be able to find anything through that smoke, which is... Unfortunate, but Boise State should still be able to get some good control here on this side if they can find an opening, although it looks like Lycan's already gone down. Yeah, generally, as we've said before, when they push into Hookah, the Broncos tend to lose some people. The smoke's going to come down here once again as the TV play comes through and the Broncos are headed over to A. At least the spike is at any rate. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. No, it was a fake. The spike has stayed here in Octagon. Yeah. That was a fake TP play. I, I really like that play from Boise State because you can see everyone's rotated except for maybe one or two players, and they're going to get an opportunity to get this spike down, I think. This is probably the best play we've seen from them over on this hookah site. Yeah, they're just playing it very slow. The turret is going to reveal them, though. They're going to have to take it out, and now you can see the players on the minimap from John Wood are dashing back, realizing they have gone the wrong direction. Broncos need to move left. now, or the man advantage they've gained with that big TP play is not going to mean much. They're still playing Careful it slowly, now. though. I think what they're hoping to do is just get, I mean, when you get people moving, you get people out of position, like right there. Legit Soldier knew that, you know, there was, they were having to rotate back in. He knew he was going to have somebody out of position. And I think that was just the play to try and get a break. Reach with the spike op in the back. The B. spike is on the ground and Broncos standing. may not have time to plant it. The knives come out and Reach takes down Legit Soldier with the right click on those knives. 2-5, John Wood get another round in a much needed round win. They had an op in their hands, they had gone for a full buy, and you do not want to leave 5,000 credits lying on the ground at the end of the round. And Boise State had an opportunity there. You know, you said it, they had to go. When they faked the TP and they faked the rotation, they didn't actually go up and push the spike. They had to, otherwise, I mean, it really didn't mean much. The movement, you know, Legit Soldier got one as they were trying to rotate back in position, but that wasn't enough. Yeah, I feel like the Broncos, their their B site insistence is, is a little interesting. They really like pushing Come up on, to B long, go. but most rounds, it tends to be a little messy. It's just not as clean as their A site pushes, but I definitely understand the, the feeling that you can't just push the same site from the same direction over and over again because it gets predictable, right? It's easy to punish. Uh, I just think that something needs to change about the way they push B long because it's starting to come back to bite them as John Wood figure that out. Yeah, they haven't. I haven't seen enough success out of that to make it Got worth it. it. Uh, only and only Five one coming through there when there's a lot of opportunities for Bandito to get a couple of finds there with those daggers, and he only got one. That's one enemy well, remaining. Broncos just down to one. I believe that Streammaker on the Sova all on his lonesome. He's going to get swung <laughs> from the <laughs> window, and he's going to go down green with three. John Wood starting to bring it back. There's only a two-round difference here, and that is easily closable. Yeah, Boise State didn't take advantage. They had an opportunity to really take care of business, but Reach has had that off now. This is going to be the third round in a row. and He's been a little scary with that thing. Yeah, he's really, he's used that to great effect. Um, and that, it, it really kind of slows down a lot of pushes here. And so now, you know, you see, they're just keeping it over at A, which means Boise State has to push into Hookah there, which they hate doing. Yeah. So it's very interesting. There is only one player playing on A right this now. Again. Oh, yeah. Oh, excuse me. There were two. They were just right on top of each other. But the op comes out big. Reach goes down. The op is on the floor, though. And that is the opportunity the Broncos needed. They're going to plant immediately, and they're going to cut up this site using those smokes into pieces. They can manage and hold a little bit easier. The op is now in the hands of Bandito. So pushing in for John Wood just got a lot more dangerous. Yeah, that was what Boise State needed. They needed to get that op in their hands. Um, they needed to get Reach off the map, and they did a good job of that. They took the trade with Lycan, but it was worth it, I think. I love these post plants from the Broncos. You sometimes see teams trying to take full control of the entire site when you don't really need that. You need control of the spike and the angles near it. So they're happy to surrender the backside of the site to the Broncos there. They get, you can come through heaven, you can come from pipes, we're fine. You can even take little bits of U-Haul if you want to. Yeah. We don't need that. We need to control the spike and nothing else. And that allows them to cover each other with a little bit more you know, tightly wound angles, keep each other a little bit safer. Just beautiful post plants there. The Broncos walk away with a win. I think partly in due to the fact that they did get that op yep. and partly due to the fact that they just took excellent post plants.
Yeah, Bandito found a big double there at the end. And I do think that the post plants come from the up. I think it changes if you don't have that. I mean, a, a couple of Elims went the right way, I think, in Boise State to be able to play that the way they did. Ooh, Dreammaker's got his favorite gun, the Odin. Yep. He's getting spicy now as he sends the drone in to see if there's anybody playing. Because he won't find anyone, but the smoke will come down as it normally does. There are three players pushing up B, as is generally the case, but this time there's somebody playing the close corner in Octagon, and Green will get what he needs, kill Lycan, and use the dismiss to get himself out safely. Yeah, that was a, that was a big opening break because Boise State does have the two most OP guns in this game, in my opinion, with the Odin and the Op on the, on the field at the same time. And they're still up, but that was such a big opening break, and it really kind of set the tone for this round. And there Ooh. goes there goes the Odin. Too. There's the drawback of the Odin. At very long ranges, it's not what you need. Oh, missing the shot from the op there. I don't think this B push is starting to turn into what the Broncos wanted. There's smoke. There's a controller here. I think they need to go elsewhere. There is somebody playing outside TP, so maybe you don't take the TP play. Maybe you just rotate, but... I think something's got to change, and it has to change fast because they've only got 40 seconds left on the clock. I just don't think this B hit is right for them. Especially, look at all that Killjoy utility yeah, on the mini-map. Yeah, no, seriously. They 30 seconds left. John Wood's got this locked down right now on this site. Boise State's got to just force it A, throw a B fake in there or something just to keep John Wood on their toes. But every single offense for Boise State's got to run through this. Got to run the through Molotov. the other side. Yeah. They can't leave either. Now they're <laughs> stuck. Got it. There's got to be some flicks coming through for Bandito here, I think. Ooh, through the smoke, gets one. He doesn't know there might be one more back there, and there's one on his left he may not know about as well. He's out of time. Can't plant anymore. Yeah. So he's maybe looking for an exit. He just wants to hold this angle and keep his op. He saw the gun barrel. Oh, no! He misses the shot, and went. that's the downside of the op. It has a long reload between shots, so you miss that shot, and you are done, my friend. Drops it on the ground. Now, the only positive for the Broncos, there's not enough time there for John Wood to pick it up. So it goes, it goes into the oblivion. It's gone now. But still not something you want to lose if you can help it. No, it's, that's been so critical for Boise State, you know, just being able to open up sights. And, and they lost an Odin and an Op that round, I believe. And that's not, that's tough. You, you had the opportunity to really put your foot down. 8,200 credits it. is not something you want to be losing in a round. No. No, it's not. Especially because that's only two of the guns they dropped. I mean, there were every other buddy else probably had rifles and things that they dropped as well. That was those were just the two most expensive. Yeah, they 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 struggled that round, and that's really gonna hurt the eco. I mean, I guess the eco will be okay, but they needed to win it. Oh, Good shots too. Oh my goodness. Oh, didn't quite clear the corner all the way. So Andy unable to get your hat as well, but beautifully held legit soldier kind of had that on a silver platter and let it go a little bit there luckily your hat's got his back he'll get exactly one he'll get another and now your hat has full control of a site if they take control of the site quickly they will force john wood in a complete retake spikes going down your hat taking an aggressive post plant behind the default position as the recon dart comes in going to dissuade anybody from pushing in through pipes and they knew they got that neural theft info Ooh, that's going to help kill. maker with the hunter's fury you know just continuing to get more and more info which they've got the spike down now they're in a fantastic situation they know where everyone's pushing from they the player in heaven's very way. weak as well yeah so he's going to be very nervous about trying to push through that smoke blind Dreammaker playing the backside, going to upgrade himself to a Vandal. And the player in pipes remaining. is not going to get any success in U-Haul. He'll go down. Reach going down to Dreammaker. Your hat taking down his counterpart. Your hat with three Last in that round, round playing very well. The switch. Yeah, and Boise State, they find themselves once again in Dude, the this opportunity. Is, this is, that's brutal. You don't, you don't really want that to be replayed if you're a legit soldier. You want to pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, he, he kind of got dunked on there. Just and, a little bit. And, I mean, it's nice to know that your teammate's going to get the trade, but, yeah. I mean, to be fair, your hat only got the trade because uh, the, the Sage didn't clear the corner all the way, so... I mean, that could have been much worse for the Broncos if the corner had been cleared perfectly. Yeah, I think the Sage was probably still in shock that they got that first one on legit Soja. The wall is going to go up. You can see Andy playing on that Sage. There it goes. The wall's up. The Broncos know that there's a Sage playing close. And the, uh, the wall has now fortified, so that's what keeps it stronger. He tries to peek. It's a little bit of a fake trick wall with just enough space for him to peek there, but it doesn't work out in his favor, and he goes down quick. Broncos going to plant quickly in this favorite default position from A long. Oh, the spike gets down and uses the tailwind to get out before the orbital strike comes in. Perfect play there from Bandito. And you got the daggers out, too. 
They're gonna exchange some shots. They know where most of the players from the oh, side of John Wood are playing, but it doesn't do much. Bandito's gonna go down, but your hat, he's gonna get what he need. He and Soldier combined find all the kills. There's one remaining in, in market. They know where he is, and like it takes him down. Broncos 8-4 with four players remaining. That's gonna keep their eco nice and healthy, only leaving Switching one gun on the ground this round. Yeah, that round changed very quickly. Um, it looked like it could have gone either way. The site was kind of split in half. You've got the John Wood playing play players playing the backside. You've got the Boise State players playing the spike side. But right here, just boom, boom, boom. Three guys drop, and it's all over after that. Yeah, I was really worried when uh, when the daggers missed there for Boise State. Bandito couldn't find one, and I, I got a little concerned there for him because really it opened everything up. The aggressive play didn't come through, but... Your hat and soldier just did a great job of uh, finding a bunch of big elims. Bang, 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 like you said. Now we swap sides. Your hat uh, going to be holding this close angle. Nope, he changes his mind. Not holding the close angle. He's going to send a smoke to A long. And then he's probably going to play U Haul. That's a favorite position of a lot of Silva's, or excuse me, of Omens. Silva is playing B long, and he's going to get a one shot headshot kill onto green with that. Uh, that sheriff of his. So now they've got a pretty good guess, especially using this camera. They're going to see the smoke come down and realize that oh most of the wife. hit from John Wood is coming through B. And the, the close angle from Legit Soldier, he'll get two before he goes down to the frenzy of John Wood. That was clinical. That was a crosshair setup. They've got a crossfire from anybody tra attempting to push through that smoke on Hookah, and that was a death trap. Yeah, the ability for Legit Soldier to trace with that... Uh, with that jet there as she kind of flew out, um, used the upwind to go sideways there. And, and yeah, that was that was impressive to just kind of trace with the frenzy. That was nice. This is a nice flick. And then his teammates were able to clean it up as everyone's looking in the wrong direction. That was just, that was clean. Well, and it all yes. opened up with a great first elim there with a headshot coming through with the oh, sheriff. That's so spot. important. When you can when you can use that sheriff to good effect, it can really be dangerous in these pistol rounds. So the Broncos have stacked the B side, expecting a hit si similar to the last one, but there's actually heavy shower control coming from John Wood. They've got three pushing up that direction. Your hat gets info on one in the short by TP, but they can probably hear all the footsteps in the plant coming through in a default position. Oh, plant denied. Oh, that was filthy. Bandito gets two headshots in quick succession. Oh. Not going to get the third, but there's only one remaining for John Wood, and he's down. Wow. And the Broncos didn't uh, didn't spend too much there, I don't think. No. I don't know what kind of information your hat got there in U-Haul, but the speed of the rotation from Boise State, it was like... We're halfway through A, or we're halfway into B, all of a sudden, psych, we're literally just gonna swing just like that. I don't, again, I don't know what your hat saw, but he must have saw everything. Booty Bandito almost got three there with that Sheriff on the short angle. A little disappointing he didn't, but hey, them's the breaks. When you get two in a 1v3, there's nothing to complain about that at all. Yeah, the Cover second the second find there was really impressive. He just continued to ego chow. I liked it a lot. Yeah, I mean, the first one, there's somebody planting. He's kind of defenseless. That one you kind of expect, but the second one is what makes Bandito just a menace to play against, especially on this jet. Now he's got the op out. We saw how dangerous he was with that in the first half. This is a really tough situation now because, yeah, he's nasty with the op. Wow, look how aggressive Dreammaker is. He's up behind the players from John Wood. He's going to get spotted out by the Cypher, or excuse me, the jet. Going to tailwind away to safety, and now Dreammaker's revealed, but, oh, that could have been bad if he hadn't gotten revealed there. And now, yeah, you see everyone's kind of pushing over. They found the opening. This is definitely going to be a B hit, and Boise State's got to rotate around. So they have one in the back and two over on A site. They've got to get there now. Ooh, Lycan going to get the reveal. Going to see that there's somebody playing that back corner. They can't safely push into Luka just yet, out. but the players are on site from the side of Octagon. Lycan, Lycan needs to keep an, his head on a swivel. He's going to get backstabbed. Ooh, gets He's what he needs. Down, Two down for John Wood and three left pushing onto the site through Hookah. And they are stuck because that is walled off tight. Green gets one. He's going to get safely to the back of the site. Left. And now Lycan is pinched. He needs help. And help is not here yet. Oh, oh. Oh, gets one, but then he's going to go down. down. He put himself in a nice 1v2. And you see your hat's coming back in. Trying to see if he can help it all. That's oh, there's great one. shots from the Spectre, though. Great shots. He's got the 1v1, and he has his SMG, but the Vandal is better. Green with three, going to finish that one off. John Wood still not out of the woods yet. Uh, I see I see what you did there. I hate myself for doing I that. See, I see what you did there, and I like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, that was dumb. I hate that. <laughs> There's no way you planned that. That just you, you just said that, and then you realized what you said as you were saying it. I'm assuming. Or no. did you did you write that down? I. I'm not gonna say one way or the other. I don't oh know no. what's. I'm not. I don't know what's worse in that situation. Oh no. So I'm not gonna say. Oh how that no, voiceless. <laughs> Boise stayed up 10-5. They've only got three rounds remaining between them and victory, and so John Woods does get the round win that they need. But the the noose is starting to tighten a little bit. They gotta sweat a little because sometimes you just lose a round, and they can't afford to just lose too many more rounds before they're in trouble. Yeah, I would say right now you got you gotta find a couple more in a row. Got a bit of momentum. Got the off off the map. That's not how you get it started. Nope. Odin Shadows kill through the boxes in hookah, and Dreammaker comes out on top. You get Dreammaker with the confidence with any of those LMGs. He's done, man. That's bad news. <laughs> Your hat playing this close angle using that classic, but there is nobody on A. I like the respect. I like the 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 restraint that he's using not to just instantly rotate over to B. With the lurk, he gets a little bit more information, is able to potentially set up a flank for later in the round. So very Ooh, well played. Good Ooh, shot. Good jumping classic flick there. And he upgraded himself really nicely there. The the knives missed, but it didn't matter because he had the classic ready to roll. And now because your hat didn't rotate, he's got position. He knows there's somebody coming in from TP. He takes that position in U-Haul, and he knows where this is coming from. He can provide that information. And an easy kill, remaining. and spike plant denied. Spike All because your hat had the restraint not to over-rotate and stay on that a sight. Yeah, this is this is really impressive from Boise State there. They, this map, they've shown a mixture of the aggression, a little bit more aggression than we saw on the first map. And they've just got some of these really smart plays. This is this is Boise State coming into full form, I think. And this spike is not going down. Ten this seconds is, left. This is Reach trying to save his op with, you know, the 60 health or whatever he has remaining because he knows he is hunted right now and he won't get out alive. Nope, and, and I think did Boise State get it picked up. I think they did. Such a, I mean, again, that's a huge play for them. They've got the op on the map. They don't have to worry about buying it. They're up 11-5. They're two away from victory. Boise State's in the power position. Absolutely. And I don't even know if they need that op. I think, as far as I know, Bandito was still holding his from a few rounds previous. So that might not even end up going used. Yeah. That's how you know you're on Scrooge the Duck <laughs> level money. When you can just leave the op there. It's whatever. Yeah, that's a pretty good situation. Uh, when you don't need it on the map because you're just winning everything. Standing yeah, ahead. Nice. The Jit Soldier playing the close angle in Octagon, which he hasn't done too many rounds previously, so he might catch somebody out here. Bandito definitely going to find what he needs. Op takes down Reach, which is the biggest fragger tonight for... Ooh, he's going to get res though, so Spike not quite a. as cut and dry as it seems. It's a four on four, and your hat is very tagged up, hiding in that shower smoke. Yeah, your hat kind of took a tough gunfight there. He did find the Elim, but I mean, it's tough when you go down that much, and uh, you're a long ways away from help. It's, it's you versus the world. Beautiful paranoia, going to catch most of the team there, and the spike has still not gone down. And he sees he sees the gun there from Sage. Oh my goodness, oh, he's okay. making plays with 11 health. He's got three kills and two of them with only 11 health on the board, but Green's going to answer back with three of his own. So it's a 1v2 for Dreammaker. He's going to get one with the wall bang. Does he get the second with the wall bang? That Odin can be deadly through the walls, as we know. He knows exactly where he is. Can he find this? Oh, oh, he can't. He missed a couple of shots, and the Spectre shots come through for Green. Oh, that's disappointing. You even got the headshots, but individual headshots with that Odin, you know, one individual bullet just doesn't do too much damage because they fire so many of them, you know? Yeah, and the offs back on the side of John Wood. I don't know if you saw Green just threw it down there right at the very end. So now they're in a spot where if they can find one or two more rounds, this is going to, you know, Boise State can't just afford to, to think, oh, we're two away, you know, just lay back. John Wood's now got an op, and they got a little bit of momentum. I think Boise State is going to go for a half buy here. They don't, I just, Bandito does have a Vandal. But I saw a Sheriff and only light armor being bought by a couple of the Broncos, so... They may not have all the credits they'd like. They might, you know, kind of give this one away in hopes that they can get a better Ooh. buy in a future round. You want to talk about getting away with your life there. That <laughs> crazy. Oh, there's the op kill from Reach, and the Broncos are already Spike in trouble. Planted. One you player dead, run. another one about to die. As the lockdown comes in as well, they are daring the Broncos to push into this site. I love this confidence. This is, I love this confidence from John Wood. This is what they need to do if they want to have Ooh, a Ooh, they got the lockdown destroyed. Good shock dart from the Silva on the Broncos. There's Reach with another one. I love seeing good op play, and we're seeing that. That's three this round from Reach with the op. 
Wow, that's just unclean. That is filthy, my man. But yeah. just soldier gonna barely escape with his life, heal himself up a little bit, but he's still staying down not well. That's four. Four for reach in that round, almost the ace. Yeah, fit. Like I said, Boise State's got to watch themselves here now because that's two rounds in a row for John Wood. The Ops on the map. Boise State half fought there. So they should have decent eco. But They're hoping to come away with a round win and put themselves on map point with this one. I think they kind of expected to lose that one with that half buy, knowing that they'd have a better buy in this round. If they don't win this round here, though, I'm then they're in little, trouble. Yeah, I'm, I'll be concerned if they can't find a way to win this round. Absolutely. They're putting a lot of pressure onto showers, too. Both teams, in fact. Bandito pushing up very early, and the players from the side of John Wood are also contesting that old orb. So I think that's even reached with the op. Oh, you got to be careful, Bandito. Yeah, that was the oh, play. Oh, I just peed a little for you. <laughs> he didn't even buy a gun. He just knew he had to get that play. The, the smoke came down from Omen, and it didn't work out. The knives didn't come through. That's not a good start to this round for Ooh, Boise State. Oh, but the Hunter's Fury gets one, so Boise State up by a player as the Hunter's Fury takes out one, and your hat has his ult as well. Trades. Oh, very good trade. The op is still in the hands of Reach, though, and as long as he has that, you can't relax if you're the Broncos, charges. especially in these long sight lines. Yeah, it's 2v3, but if you're Boise State, you got to find a way to get that op down. Otherwise, it's yeah, almost yeah, yeah. like a 3v3. It feels like a 3v3 because that op is just so OP. Spike's not down, though. This is Boise State's game to play. They're waiting on John Wood. And that's a good play in my eyes because that forces the op to be the aggressor. And an op never wants to be pushing. They want to hold. Yeah. So and I like this play from the Broncos, especially with this neural theft. You get one kill, you find out where the last person is, easy cleanup. Yeah, and you see, like, it's just, he's, he's almost daring John Wood to do something here. He's just kind of shouldering that corner. He finally gets away. Yeah, they'll dash in. You heard that tailwind from the jet, and he might go for the plant now. Where are you going, Lycan? Yeah, the plant. Looks like he was going down. There's Reach finding one. Brought it back to a 2v2. Ooh, they use the hot hands to deny the default plant spot. Oh, the that short so angle cool. catches Reach by surprise. He gets the op kill and then picks up another headshot onto the killjoy. The Broncos on match point, and they stole the op. Yeah, Match the hot point. hands play there was fantastic. And um, again, another high IQ play to deny the plant. That completely messed up the timing of that round. That yeah, you can tell after state. that tailwind, they wanted to plant immediately, but the hot hands comes through and you can't really plant in the default position you'd like to. It forces them to back off and reevaluate how they want to play that. Yeah, and then Lycan was the shots there at the end to clean it up. But I, I got a little concerned when that first off shot came through, but in the end, Boy State did well to take that back. Now it's scary for John Wood. You got to win five rounds in a row. You're looking like you had a bit of a chance when you put a couple rounds together, but five in a row. And the ops on the board. For and the ops State. on the board for Bandito. He's holding it, and he knows where the hit is coming from because John Wood have not been quiet at all. There's very obviously a B hit coming through here. I think if you're John way. Wood, you just, I mean, it's kind of... He's got a full send it. Yeah, Down. exactly, exactly. And I like it. You know, it's like you can't, you're not... Uh, not worried about it, but yeah, there's the hot, or there's the curveball, excuse me, Boise State, and just kind of Oh flying. my goodness! Spike They're flying. B. Soldier uses only the W key. What, I love it. Why Why would you use any other one? That's, that's the one to go for. Oh, and he styles on him, the tailwind in the classic Defenders kill to win. end it. That's just rude. Wow, the, the confidence. The Broncos put it away. They come up 2-0. Two very convincing wins against John Wood Community College tonight as the Broncos win. They move up and improve their record even more. They're starting to look very strong. Very strong indeed. Yeah. I love seeing Boise State win in different ways. That was so important to see them be able to take rounds in different ways. Just huge. I loved watching them play tonight. It was so intelligent and not, you know, they used gunplay, obviously. The gunplay is cracked, but they didn't rely on it too much tonight. They were able to take the win in ways that show that they're building a lot of versatility. I loved seeing that from the Broncos. Yeah, I agree. Boise State Esports is always looking for talented players, production, and broadcast talent. Top talent, along with good grades and eligibility, can earn you scholarships as well. Sign up today by visiting boisestate.edu slash esports for more information. We've got a heck of a program here. It's run by our amazing doc. We've got broadcast team. We've got our casters. We'd love to have you join us blast it really is it's it's been the funnest time i've had and in, in my entire college experience working with this with this fantastic esports department it has been a blast well that's going to be it for us tonight we have had one banger of a game but we're going to close out this broadcast for you with both a player of the game and a top five 
So we're going to launch into that top five first. Uh, sorry, the player of the game first, my bad. We're launching into the player of the game first, so we're going to see Baratel, your beard th thrives on chaos. Is that old? I think that might be an old Twitch chat. That has to be. I think that's older. Baratel's not casting that. Go home, Twitch chat. You're drunk. But but Baratel's beard does thrive on it chaos. It is beautiful. For sure. So we're going to launch into our player of the game coming up here pretty quickly. I'm interested to see who it is. We had standout performances from everybody tonight on the Broncos. But I think I know who it might be. Mm. I think it might be a certain Phoenix player. There he is. Legit yeah. soldier. Yeah, especially after this 1v3 clutch, I felt like he deserved it. Yeah, I agree. This is a beautiful chance to heal himself up. Uses the curveball to buy himself the space to peek. Finds what he needs. Beautiful clutch. And that wasn't the only one. There were multiple times tonight when I saw Legit Soldier with a three-piece coming down with the kills that he needs. It play, you know, watching him is, is we can see the brilliance, but sometimes when, when you play with him, and it's ridiculous to play with him. Because the funny thing is a lot of this stuff is instinctual. Like, when these games happen, players don't have time to think through a lot of this strategy. It just kind of feels right to them. They just kind of do what feels right because they've spent so much time training. Yeah. You know, they don't, they're not thinking about there could be someone in this angle, so I'll hold this angle and look at this direction. They just kind of they do what feels right, and that's just a lot of game sense and practice to put you in those sort of positions. Well, and that that's the next level. You know, as a as a player, the next level is going from thinking about these really good plays to just just doing it. You know, that's what happens when you make that jump to high tier. There's a reason why this Broncos team is ranked where they're ranked. Well, we're going to close out tonight with our top plays presented by the Idaho Army National Guard. They invite you to take your impressive real-time critical thinking skills into real time with more than 10 jobs offering two, a 20K bonus and your degree of choice paid for. The Idaho Army National Guard is the best team out there. This has been one heck of a match. We've had a blast bringing it to you. This is Tim Voiceless Whitman and Riley Nappy Boyd signing off for the evening. Check out these top five plays, and we'll see you next time, everybody. Set, move on and talk about... There aren't necessarily anybody there. There goes the showstopper coming in from Greenmaker. They're going to get two. Woody Bandito picks up another. That's three for the Broncos. Four. The overheal comes in. The Bandito goes down. There's only one kill boy remaining for John Wood, and he's not long for this world. Bandito will take somebody out. The Greenmaker will be out in turn. There goes the paranoia. Not going to find anybody, I don't think. There's a player on the left that you have on the other side of that cycle case, but may not be there. Oh, the strength of the scope to get what he needs. Oh, Turhat comes around, picks up another headshot. He gets his third of the round, and the Broncos are going to give it to They're going to go up 7 4. Almost didn't get that win there. Turhat's going to get taken down by Reachless. One versus one, but there is a little remaining to lose there. You know, if he decides to send that out, he has a much better play on this team. He can pump fake, and he does get the information he needs. He knows exactly where they're playing. I take it to half. Oh, oh! The disrespect starts the pump fake. Take yeah, they'll dash in. You heard that tailwind from the jet, and he might be able to the plane now. What are you doing? Going down. There's Reach finding one. Brought it back to the team. They use the hot hands to deny the default plant spot. Oh, the that short angle tough. catches Reach by surprise. He gets the up tilt and then picks up another headshot on. Shots. They know where most of the players from the side of John Wood are playing, but it doesn't do much. Bandito's going to go down, but your hat, he's going to get what he needs. He and Soldier combined find all the kills. There's one remaining in, in market. They know where he is, and like it takes him down. Broncos 8-4, with four players remaining. That's